Hey friends, how's it going today? David Potts with Song Notes here, and I want to answer a question that came in twice from members of the Song Notes community in this past week. And the topic is going to be muting strings when we don't want to. And, and what does muting strings mean? Well, uh, so Lindsay, you wrote in asking about the G chord, right? And you talk about how when you play this G chord, your no matter which finger you use on this low E string, right, this thickest string note, whether it's your middle or ring, how you're kind of always muffling that fifth string right there, right? It's not making that clean sound, even though you want it to, right? So you're asking for some tips on how to, um, you know, position your fingers or hold the guitar or whatever to avoid this, because it can be very frustrating when you can't make a clean sound with chords. And this is going to apply to all kinds of chords you make, right? Um, and Tanya, you wrote in last week saying the same thing. You just got an electric guitar, uh, your fingers are short, and you mute the strings, right? And you have to look down at the strings to see where to place your finger. So um, Tanya and Lindsay and anyone else who's having trouble or who, who's had trouble or occasionally struggles with unintentional muting of the strings or just strings that don't sound clean and you know they sound maybe muffled when you're trying to play a chord right you're not getting those clean those clean string sounds I'm going to help you out here and give you some general tips all right uh, so first up let's go through some of the mo most common ones right first up is you want to make sure especially for chords like C and for G you're going to want to make sure you have a nice curl to your fingers right meaning if you just sort of put your fingers flat on the guitar right you might be able to get that bass note good but then what's going to happen is that this finger is just going to sort of naturally hit you know, the next thinnest strings, right? So I could get that fifth string note, but then the, the, the fourth string note might be muted, even if I'm not pressing it down, right? So what we want to do is kind of get a nice curl to our fingers, right? So it's almost like an, like an arch, right? So a, as opposed to laying them flat on the fretboard where they're touching all the strings, right? So it's a real nice curl. Think of a ball being thrown in the air that's coming straight down, right? That's one thing you're going to want to keep in mind. It's going to sort of give you the clearance. Um, another tip, though, about this, and this sort of goes hand in hand with that advice, is you want to make sure you're pushing down on the string with more of the, the tip of your finger. Let me see if I can demonstrate this in the camera right here, right? So the tip being like, um, you know, right here as opposed to the fleshy underside. So, for example, I could play, you know, that fifth string note, the, the, the root note of a C chord with the fleshy underside, I can make a clean noise, but what's gonna happen is I'm gonna mute those four third strings. So if I arch my fingers and I push down with that fingertip, right? What that's gonna do is give me a nice sound that is uh, gonna allow the finger to kind of come straight down into the chord a little bit more, okay? So that, uh, into the string a little bit more. So that's one thing you might wanna work on as well. You might find that that causes some pain in your fingers, but you gotta just stick with it because what's gonna happen, of course, is that you're gonna develop calluses on the tips of your fingers and they're gonna become a bit more firm. And that's actually gonna lean into another point, which is with time, as you develop calluses, this will become a little bit easier because the firmer, you know, fingertips with calluses are going to be able to get a firm sound with a little less pressure. When you have really fleshy skin, you're going to have to push down probably a little bit harder. It's going to kind of make your skin almost expand into the other strings, right? And that's going to mute the strings, right? This is muting. We don't want that, right? So use the fingertip, right? Closer to the nail, push down, and uh, you get those calluses going. You arch things, you push down with the fingertips, those are gonna help you out, right? Now, the next tip I wanna say is, you know, the tendency might be when we're playing any note on the guitar, say we're playing the third fret of the low E string, for example, with our ring finger, the tendency might be to push the string down in the middle, right, exactly in between the two metal bars, right, the, the literal frets. What you actually wanna do, though, is you wanna go up to the, the fret that's sort of up the neck, right? So a third fret is technically anywhere in this region, right? But if we want to be as close to this as possible, and what's going to happen is you're going to be able to get the same sound you get as if you put your finger here, right? But if we're closer to the fret, we actually have to push down with less force. So it's going to be easier to play, right? So instead of doing it in the middle, move your finger all the way up to the fret. And you can really almost get just about on top of the fret and still get that clean sound. So for a G major chord, for example, notice how my ring, my middle, and then my pinky are all pretty close to the frets, right? You could technically put your finger in the middle, and that would work, but it's gonna require more force, and therefore it's gonna require that your calluses are in good shape, that your finger form is good and all that stuff. So you're gonna get a bit more leeway and a bit more of a mechanical advantage, uh, so to speak. I don't know if that's a, the technical, correct use of that term, but it's gonna be more, you're gonna get more leverage. How about that, right? By sort of putting things closer to the fret, okay? So 
try that out and uh, I think you might be in good shape. Another thing also is you don't want to push overly hard, right? There might be a tendency to just give it everything you've got. And if you do that, what can happen is basically, yeah, you're going to push hard, but it's going to sort of cramp your finger down. It's going to cause that extra skin on your finger to sort of bleed over the edges, right? And then possibly hit the string. So only push down as hard as you need to. And a good little exercise you can do is kind of just see how how light of a touch and how light of a feel you can get away with, right? I know, so Tanya, you mentioned that you got an electric guitar recently. I know when I got my electric, one of the things I really struggled with at first was I was used to really pushing down all the frets hard all the time because I come from an acoustic, acoustic world the previous 20 years. But on an electric guitar, you don't need that much force at all. So it almost can be a bit of an of a unnatural thing to push down lighter. So you want to push down hard enough to get that clean sound uh, and no harder, or not too much harder, right? That, and that's going to sort of possibly help you out and stop the muting thing from happening, right? Another thing I want to talk about is when you put your fingers into the fretboard, right? For a G, for a C, whatever chord it is. And, and Tanya, this might help the, with the, the mention. You mentioned how you always have to look. You're always having to look at the uh, strings all the time, right? Some amount of looking is, is required, you know, to sort of wayfind find and make sure you're on the right fret and everything. But I will say this. You do want to practice not just relying on your eyes all the time. You want to develop that sense of feel with your hand. So, you know, if we're playing a C chord, right? Get your hands in that shape and then look away and, you know, concentrate on the feeling of those fingers on the fretboard. And if you're not getting a clean sound, what you can do, a good exercise is one finger at a time, take your finger off and put it back on. Kind of make sure you get your fingertip, make sure you get a nice curl. Then I'll do the middle finger. Now I'll do the index finger. Okay, let's go to an E chord, E major, right? So I put my fingers where they're supposed to go, but maybe it's a little bit muffly, a little bit muted. Instead of just craning your neck and looking, use your, develop your sense of feeling. Feel it, right? Middle finger. Okay, let's pick it up. Let's get it as close as we can there. This, this, this uh, one right there, the ring finger. Middle finger right there, okay? Get it adjusted, get your index finger up. Yeah, you might find that, you know, some strings, some fingers need to move closer to the frets. Sometimes you need to space things out. It's all a bit of a feeling game, but spend some time feeling it, right? For the A major chord, for example, I, I talk about in a previous lesson how I play it using this triangle shape, right? My fingers are making a triangle, so to speak. They're not three in a row. Because if I do three in a row, I kind of have bigger fingers. And if I do three in a row, notice how this, you know, it's hard to cramp them all in there. And this one's really far away from, from the fret. So I'm having to push down extra hard with the index finger there. And what I find works really well for me is just to use the middle and rings fingers really close to the fret there. Then I put my index finger down in between and then, okay, kind of adjust them if I need to. Like I said, take time, settle them in, work on the feeling, okay? I get a clean sound, right? So this works better. And I guess my point is, this is a, a nice little trick for the A major chord, but with any chord, don't feel like, I got my fingers on the fretboard, but they're muting, I can't get it to sound good. Send some time, adjust them, adjust them, get it right, right? Arch your fingers, use the fingertip, try it again. And I think you might find with some adjustment, right? Settle into the chord, right? This is gonna train your hand, it's gonna develop that sense of feeling to really help you out. Now. Here's one thing I want to say too about this in general, and this is going to apply Lindsay, Tanya, anyone else. When you're playing chords, again, what I, I suggest you don't, you know, put your hand in the shape and then just do a, a big strum, right? Take it slower, do one string at a time. If we're doing an E chord, right? Pluck it, one string at a time like this. Okay, this is going to help, number one, develop a sense of feeling with your pick and your strumming hand. You pluck that sixth string, that fifth string, that fourth string, that third string, right? This is going to help you develop that sort of, those sort of micro motions that you need. Your strumming hand, it, there's so much uh, benefit you can gain when you learn to play guitar from just learning the subtle controls and subtle movements and subtle motions with your picking hand. And doing one string at a time is a good way to practice that, but it's also a good way to make sure you're getting the clean sounds down here. So if you play in the G chord, right, make sure those thickest couple strings are good and go up, right? And another tip along those lines is say, you know, Lindsay, you talk about the G chord in particular. Um, practice it along with the C chord, right? And the reason why 
And, uh, and, and while you're doing this, actually practice just the thickest three strings of the chord, right? So the, the G chord would be these three strings, and then move the fingers to the C chord, right? And notice how I'm just doing the thickest few strings of each chord. I'm not worrying about the thinnest strings. The reason to do this is it just takes things off of your plate. It kind of helps you focus on just one thing, okay? Getting a clean sound on those two strings. Again, you might need to work on things to get that, that fifth string to ring cleanly and not mute, right? But practice just those thinnest three strings in succession, right? Go to the fifth string and fourth string and third for the C. And back to the G. So I'm doing one string at a time, and I'm only doing three strings here. It's okay if you accidentally pluck the wrong string, right? But just, again, this is all about putting in that practice and that feeling. You don't need to be doing full strums or nothing, right? Full strums are busters. There's, there's plenty of, of uh, of value you can get from practicing one string at a time, okay? So, in general, I think those are the tips that I would have for uh, for getting cleaner sounds, right? It's not gonna be a single answer that's gonna solve all your problems in most cases. It's probably a combination of these things. Fingertips, right? We talked about that. We talked about a nice curl on your fingers, right? Um, stay close to the fret, right? That's gonna allow you to sort of get more leverage and just have to push down less. Don't push down too hard, right? Just hard enough to get the clean sound but not any harder, ideally. Remember, with time, your calluses will develop and your calluses will help you out, right? You'll be able to push down with less force and get that clean sound. Um, one other thing I wanna say too is if you have a guitar with older strings, uh, change your strings if you can. Newer strings, right? Especially if your strings are gunked up and nasty, you're just not gonna get a clean sound in general, even if you are pushing just that string down, right? It is nice to have, you know, to be in tune and to have fresher strings if you can manage it. It's just gonna sound nice nice and good there. So uh, take it slow, a little bit of time practicing this. Every practice session, right, can just sort of get you into that sense of feel. Just pick a couple chords switch between them, work on all this stuff together, and uh, it is my hope, and uh, I, I do think with some perseverance you will get there, and stick with it, because it might seem impossible, the frets might seem too small, your fingers might seem too big, but I'm telling you, with time, you will improve. My ukulele that I have behind me, a couple years ago, I was really into playing that, and those frets are so little, and my fingers are so big, and I was like in total disbelief that I could ever make sort of melodic music and make things work, but with time, your fingers, that, that sense of feel, as it develops, your fingers just kind of settle into the place where they need to go to get that clean sound. But you have to work at it. Don't rely on your eyes all the time. Your eyes are helpful to get your hands in the general right area, but you really have to work on that sense of feel and, and sort of that sense of feel about what it feels like to push down and also what it sounds like when you pluck it. If it, you're getting the, a muffled sound, you're gonna have to move things with your, your fretting hand, but try again. And once you get the clean sound, you sort of get that sort of connection, right? Okay, this feeling when I pluck it sounds good, right? And you kind of, it sort of cements itself in its brain in my experience, right? But give it time, stick with it. Lindsay, Tanya, uh, anyone else watching, hope you all found this helpful. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions. And thanks you all for supporting uh, my lessons over on the Song Notes uh, website. So uh, everyone else watching, um, if you're not familiar, my name is David Potts. Songnotes.net is my website, right? All my lessons are there, right? I have song lessons. I have, you know, Q&A lessons like this, tips and techniques. I'm building out a bunch of courses. I just launched my blues course. If you want a sort of blues fundamental beginner guide to the blues, uh, step by step, it walks you through things with video lessons, with exercises on the screen, with some practice tracks, all that sort of thing, right? Uh, I have tons and hundreds and hundreds of videos that are free to watch on YouTube. They're also on my website, songnotes.net. But if you are a member on my site, you get access to all my extended stuff, my extended video lessons, the jam tracks, all my instructional, right, the non-song PDFs I make, the practice sheets showing you tips and techniques and theory, all my course um, printouts are all available with membership. Even if you join just for one month, you get access to everything uh, during that time. Any of my PDFs, my instructional PDFs you download, you can keep forever, right? And I also make song sheets. Now the song sheets are licensed, so you have to buy them at a different site who provides licensing and, and make sure things are good for copyright. So you don't buy those on my site, but if you're a member on my site, you get a 50% discount code that you can use when you're buying any of my song sheets. So uh, that is a great way to help you out. It's the biggest discount they will let me give. So I'm happy to uh, provide all this stuff for all of you. And uh, thanks very much, Lindsay, Tanya, everyone else who is supporting me with membership. It keeps the lights on here and keeps these lessons coming. So um, y'all send in your questions. Keep on getting the guitar in your hands. 
keep on working at it, right? Try not to get defeated. With time, things do come and you do make that progress and you can get to that good spot of making the beautiful music that you are sort of drawn to, right? So I'll see you in the next video. And until then, my friends, take care and bye-bye.